All right, welcome back everybody. And I'm gonna give you a quick sneak peek on what's gonna be going on for 2021 as far as some of the wild tomatoes that I'm growing. And uh, we'll just give you a look at what's going on here. And um, we'll talk a little bit about them. All right, so first of all, we got some micro dwarfs that we're growing for the winter time. So I got tomatoes during the winter. We're gonna try these varieties out and uh, we're gonna see how they do. And um, maybe we'll do some tomato reviews during the winter once they start putting out tomatoes. They may even put out tomatoes in uh, you, know, uh, you know, October, November. So I may actually uh, have some of these ready. So first microdorf we got is this right here. I think that's pronounced Birdie Rogue. Then we got this one. I'm not even sure how you would pronounce that. Something Gelb. Okay, we got that one. And then over here, we have the Pinocchio, which I have the red version of Pinocchio. So I'm not sure. This is an orange version. So we'll have to see what that is. That's the Pinocchio. And then we got this one, which is called the... Jacollus Microdwarf. And we got that one. Now there's there's a lot of Microdwarf varieties out there. This is just a small sample of them. I think I'm going to be growing the uh, Micro Tom next year too. I think I have seed coming for that. So we'll probably be growing the Micro Tom as well. I want to definitely include that in my little Microdwarf collection that I have. But here's another one. This one's just called The Moment. So I don't know much about that particular micro dwarf. And over here is the last one that we're growing. And that's called Baby. We got Baby. And those are our micro dwarfs that we are going to be growing for 2021. Even though it's 2020, we might get some of the micro dwarfs to come up, um, you know, fruit this year, which would be good. So let's take a look at some of the wilds that we got grown. And we'll start off over here. And this is Solanum cheesemani. Now these seeds are from the original plants that are on the island. So that, in other words, the seeds from this variety, the fruits were actually picked directly from the plants that are on the Galapagos Island. I'm not sure which island it was, but they were actually picked and harvested from those plants. Those tomato plants on that island, some of them are 100 years old. So these tomatoes are going to be as true as you're going to get for Galapagos Island uh, species. It's just the truest form you're going to get. So that is directly from the original uh, ascent, if you will. So look forward to seeing reviews in that. We just did a proofing. I just needed to know if the seed was viable and what's going to come out of it. So uh, I'm going to winter it over anyway, but it may or may not live or it might get sick. So if that happens, well, it, it is what it is. We'll just restart it from seed again for next year. Okay, so the next one is is called Solanum, which I never heard of this one before. Cornelione. Cornelione. Corne, corn. 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 Molar. Molari. Whatever that says. Okay, and that's this one. I've never heard of this variety. I think this is a recently, what, what, what this is, is this was recently renamed. And so what was happening was, is a lot of the wild tomato species that are out there, a lot of them were all classified under the Solanum peruvianum umbrella. So there were a lot of species that were very close to the Solanum peruvianum and they were they're just different species altogether, but they for some reason they just put everything under Solanum peruvianum and they're not. It's like a lot of other species I have should actually be separate species, but um, that's what was going on with this. So they recently renamed this into its own uh, species, and that's what this is here: the Solanum cornelios molari or whatever it's called. So that's a, that's recently been renamed. So it's actually a different species from. Uh, Solanum Peruvianum, but it was under the Solanum Peruvianum umbrella, if you will. Then we got Solanum uh, Pinelli, right over here. You can see they got nice round looking leaves. This, this tomato variety is, they say, is somewhat between a potato and a tomato. It doesn't make potatoes, but uh, it has a lot of features of like the potato. 
And so there's, as far as I know, there's like maybe four or five different variants of the, uh, or ascents, if you will, of the Salon and Pinelli. So there's, there's four or five different types. This is just one of them, but there's, there's several different variations of it. And they all go under different PI numbers or plant inventory numbers. So just keep that in mind. I got to stand up here. Okay, the next one is this one right here. And that is called the Solanum uh, Galapagoense, or I was calling them Solanum Miners because the Solanum Miners are the like cherry or current variety of tomato that originate from the Galapagos Island. So I've just been calling them Miners, but it's actually... It's not a cheese manny. It's it's very confusing because the name cheese manny and uh, um, Galapagoense interlace between the names a lot. If you're going from the accepted botanical names and the unaccepted botanical names, like like a Persicon versus Solanums, that kind of a thing. So if you just stay with the accepted names, this would be called where are you? This would be called uh, Solanum. Uh, Galapagoense, okay? Just like there's a capsaicin Galapagoense. It gets very confusing. There's a lot of different things that use this Galapagoense name. Um, so this is the, this is, uh, now you have seen me do videos on the uh, Solanum Galapagoense, the minor version of the hairless variety. Well, this is the hairy variety, which is very, very rare. In fact, you cannot get seeds for this anywhere. So this will this will be something new that you've probably never seen or even heard of before, but this variety here is the hairy variety, and from what I understand, this fruit is not actually edible. Though we will make an attempt to try to do a taste test on it just to give you an idea on what it might taste like. But it's not an edible fruit. It's said that to be toxic. It's in the toxic tomato family. So this is the hairy variety. This grows very close to, to and or near the shorelines of the beaches on the Galapagos Island. It basically grows along the beach lines. So this particular variety is highly salt tolerant, whereas most plants are not salt tolerant. So, but this particular variety of tomato is highly salt tolerant. It can really take a lot of abuse with salt water. So we will, uh, we will definitely uh, be exploring that one a little bit better. All right, so look forward to that. We'll be trying to do reviews on it. I say trying because I don't know if I'm gonna even eat it I'll, I'll taste it and then spit it out but it is a toxic tomato okay so over here and this is called buffalo burr and i'm not sure how you pronounce this at, at the moment this is called i think it's solanum rostratum buffalo burr and it goes under many other names this plant's actually native to the united states believe it or not and it grows like an invasive species in many areas of the united states it doesn't grow like an invasive species in uh, Pennsylvania, but in other parts of the uh, country, it does grow quite wild. Uh, I, I, I believe in New York, it's actually a, considered an invasive species. It might be. I think they have a problem with this up in New York. Um, but here it is. That's the buffalo burr. This is this is not an edible tomato. This is just for ornamental purposes and for demonstration. Just trying to share some of my interest in it, into the Solanum species of things. So this is one of the ones that I'm including in that. And uh, once it flowers, and you can see it's already got flowers on it. This plant can't be no more than maybe three or four weeks old. It's already flowering. And uh, I'll probably get some of those spiky things. you got to see these tomatoes. They're, they're spiky balls. They're completely covered with a spiky husk. And there's no way you can actually handle the thing once it gets like that. So we'll uh, we'll show you that in more detail once that actually happens. But again, this is not an edible variety of tomato or solanum. Uh, this is a wild, uh, inedible form. It's just being grown for um, the purposes of science, if you will. Okay, over here we have something called the lily of the valley or something this is called. This ought to be interesting. I'm not too familiar with this, but I believe in some parts of the United States, this might actually be considered an invasive species. And I know in certain countries it's considered an invasive species. This plant can grow quite long and it can be quite invasive. And uh, it produces these little, um, I don't know what you want to call them. They look like tomatoes, but they're not tomatoes, but they're kind of long and uh, narrow. And they're just weird looking fruit. So I figured I'd try growing that just for a point of interest or something, just to see how it does up here. 
Um, I, I get, this is not in the tomato family. This is not a solanum or anything like that. I'm just growing this for interest, but we figure we proof the seed just to make sure it's going to be what it is. And um, uh, sure enough, it's, it appears so far to be that way. Now, I am going to try to grow it throughout the winter to see how it grows. And if it dies, it dies. We'll regrow it for spring. I have plenty of seed for these. And so we'll just regrow all this stuff if it, any of it dies. So it's just... Uh, this is I'm just basically proofing the seed right now just to make sure uh, everything is what it is all right so let's go over to the next one and that right there is called Solanum carpiensi a lot of people might call that the Tazimbo or something like that and it's not the Tazimbo it's something else but it's carp it's Solanum carpiensi I'm growing a cup I have another um, variety of the Solano Carpiancy. It's it's a different version of it. These plants really, really take a long time to actually produce fruit that I'm finding out. And the one that I got planted in my garden over in the back, um, that one's already like three feet tall and I still don't see any flowers on it. So I don't I may have to dig that thing up and bring it in, which I'm not looking forward to, but I may have to just to get at least some fruit off it. So um, well, if we have to, we have to, you know, but this is another variation of that, that, uh, Solanum carpiensi. There's other names for this. I, I don't remember what they are offhand. I'm just showing you, uh, quickly what I got growing for, uh, basically growing for next year. So that's that over here. This is the wild hairy tomato. And let's see, are you in focus? Yes, that's the wild hairy tomato, and this is this this is the second variation of wild hairy tomato. This is the actual hairy variety. Now, this the other wild hairy tomato that you see me growing is generally a smooth stem, very smooth leaf variety. It's very shiny and waxy smooth on the leaf and everything. That's that's a different variation of the uh, wild hairy tomato. This is the hairy variety of the wild hairy tomato. This is actually, it, the stems get very woolly, very, very woolly. The leaves get very woolly, and uh, tomatoes, everything gets woolly on it. So it's a very woolly variety. So it's going to be an interesting thing to see uh, grow this year. And the flowers on this particular uh, version of the wild hairy tomato get quite large. I think it's the largest flower of all the tomato flowers. This thing gets absolutely huge as far as flowers go. I think it gets as big as, uh, say, an eggplant flower, which gets quite big. This gets about as big as that. So this is going to be interesting. This is the type 2 of the wild hairy tomato. Very difficult to get seeds for that. I did manage to source them, so uh, we're growing it. And so look forward to that for 2021. That'll be interesting. And then right next to it, we got Solanum neoriki. This is another wild tomato variety that, that originates from South America. I don't know that much about it offhand. I am doing research on uh, the germaplasm websites to read more about Solanum neoriki and, uh, you know, its, its genetic structure, its chromosomes and everything. But that's a totally different variety than Solanum peruvianums and all the other stuff that you see me do. That's a completely different species, and uh, just so you know, there's only about 18 or so species of tomatoes, tomato varieties. There's a lot of solanum varieties, but when it comes to the tomatoes specifically, the little family of tomatoes that there are, there's only about 18 to 20 varieties of tomatoes or something, and that's basically it. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of species that are grouped under an umbrella of things, like for example with the Solanum pruvianum, actually umbrellaed a lot of other varieties of tomatoes, which are now getting renamed and separated from Solanum pruvianum, rightfully so. But that there's a lot of that's going on. But as far as like the whole tomato thing going on, there's only about. Uh, 18 to 20 varieties of tomatoes, wild ones. And I'm growing at probably around, uh, I'd say probably around 15 now. So this is one of those varieties that uh, you're probably never going to know about or even see on the internet. But we are growing it and hopefully it doesn't die or, or anything and I can grow through the winter and uh, maybe get some fruit off. And I know these wild varieties, it's very hard to get them to fruit. 
some people that I know buy seed for me, they buy them from the uh, Salana Peruvian and they're growing them and they're, they're, they're not having too much luck, you know, trying to get it to fruit. And they're very difficult varieties to grow, guys. It takes a very dedicated mindset to be able to grow these varieties. It's not your garden variety of tomato. This is a totally different type of thing when you're growing this stuff. You, you have to have a different mindset altogether. So... Uh, anyway, that is the uh, Solanum uh, Neoriki. Uh, look forward to seeing reviews on that hopefully next year. And then last but not least, or next to last but not least, we still show you that one really quick. Uh, this one here is called Solanum Arcanum. It's another wild species of tomato. It's actually another rare variety. You won't be able to get seed for this anywhere. It's one of those things I have a knack for sourcing seed for these wild varieties, but... That's another one. That's Solanum Arcanum. It's just like the Solanum Neoriki. This one's just going to be a uh, different species. So look forward to seeing uh, me doing tomato reviews on the Solanum Arcanum. And then over here we have... This one's going to be a, a strange one. It's giving me a hard time growing. Now this is, this is a desert tomato. This tomato generally don't like moisture at all. And I'm trying to figure out its growing behavior. Uh, but I already had two plants. One just burned off and died. This one looks like it's getting ready to kind of shrivel up and die. Uh, this is called Solanum chilensi, and it's a very difficult variety to uh, actually grow and get to grow. And so I'm trying to figure it out now. Hopefully I can get this thing to uh, winter over and grow, or if not, I, I don't have very many seeds for this one. So if this one doesn't make it, we may not be seeing me do a, a review on that. But again, this is called the Solanum ch chilensi. And uh, it's, again, a desert variety of tomato. This tomato supposedly can live for months without water. So it'd be really interesting to put that to the test. But I'm going to try to get you a little closer to it. I'm not sure what, if you're blurred out or what. It's starting to get a little blurry. It's just a little thing. That's That plant is as old as the rest of these plants. And as you can see that it's still tiny, starting to yellow. I'm going to try to feed it a little, see if that helps pick it up. I got to figure this one out because uh, this one definitely is causing me problems just trying to grow it straight out. So um, not sure if we'll offer seeds on that at all in the future, but that one's a really, 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 really tough one to grow. And over here we have the 42 day tomato and I started that one on 8-7-2020 and it's still small and I don't see tomatoes coming out of it. So I don't know if I can hold true to the 42 day tomato uh uh, guarantee over here, but um, nevertheless, I figured I'd start to see just to see if it would. It looks like it's got a little bit of early blight on it or late blight it's getting. So because of that reason, I'm probably not going to winter this one over. I'll just start it again from seed next year. I just wanted to get a head start on that and see if I could do anything with it, but apparently not. And um, so we will probably drop that one. And um, that's basically it. That's just a quick look at some of the wild tomatoes for 2021. You should be expecting to see some reviews on it. Again, I have some of these micro dwarfs here. We'll probably review them in uh, during the winter time when there's not much else going on. So maybe we'll we'll do a review on those. But that's it, guys. Um, whatever information I can get on these tomatoes, I'll put in the description below. I'll leave a link to my website where you can visit the website to maybe get some of these varieties, uh, buy seed for them. And uh, that's it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care.